Anti-work. You know all about that, don't you, Asher? <laughs> He's like, yes, I don't work for nothing. I eat the treats, and I go for walks, and I poop outside. Life is good. Like, buddy, I, sometimes I wish I could poop outside. No, he gallivants outside. Yeah. Like, 30 minutes of him going off and doing nothing, or rolling around. He's a grass roller. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Except he gets itchy from it. Oh, that's true, yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, look at him. He, he can't help himself. You know who else can't help themselves? Vega, the fat boy right here. Um, once I finish up his oatmeal uh, shampoo, you know, <coughs> there's this groomer person I follow. I'm going to get some of her shampoo. Nice. Oh, there, there he is. Wish we could de-shed him somehow. Yeah, I need to get those gloves and go over them with him. Yeah. Just haven't had much time in the past couple days for much. Oh, look at him. He's very anti-work as well. Yes, he is. But he, he never worked a day in his life. Nope. What is that? Except he'd argue with you because he'd be like, what do you call all the meowing and meowing and yelling and pawing that I do to my owner to get him Complaining. To look, look, look. He's got like a hair right here. You see that? Yeah. What you said, Is that buddy? attached? Yeah. <laughs> I got a long paw here. Because <laughs> I was. Or is that just in between your toes? No, it's. Oh, it's attached, attached to your claw. It's not stuck on his claw. Oh, I was go. afraid not to. I was afraid to pull it. There he is. He's got it on his claw. <laughs> Chunky lad, just living his best life. Oh. <laughs> Well, be honest, anti-work is just, it is what it is. Some jobs are not worth it. And I'll be honest, some some jobs I've worked, I've just been like, yeah, this is really making me not have faith in the work, in the workforce. Same. <clears throat> but alas, we must, we must trudge forward and... All, in all honesty, we have uh, one here called Anti-Work. It's called Be Honest. And I guess uh, let's check it out and see what's up. Here we go. If you stopped working today, how long could you live comfortably with what you've saved? Right now? Ooh. Tomorrow. Um, if I were living alone, maybe a year. Maybe. It would not be comfortable, though. Uh, but because I don't live alone, maybe a few years. I would be working a lot more around the house, though, you know? But it would not be pretty, you know? Millionaire, age 23, claims anyone can be rich in their 20s if they stop scrolling, as he calls his generation lazy. Wait, 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 hold on. There's got to be more to this story, right? Like, oh, yeah, my dad actually owns a multi-billion dollar company or some crap like trust that. Fund, but baby. no, he made me work my way up. This is why there's a rush to get us back to the office. The office real estate crash will be so sharp and deep that Capital Economics thinks office values are unlikely to recover by 2040? Oh no! Maybe we should let people work from home and then turn those office buildings into real housing. You know what I mean? That's just a lot of wasted space for absolutely no goddamn reason just so they have an easier time controlling you. <laughs> uh, just work harder. Gavin Newsom ordered the, the, the what? <laughs> Homelessness and Housing Initiative to find out just how bad San Francisco's crisis Crisis is. People are homeless because their rent is too high. The survey found that when nearly 3,200 people lost housing, their median income was $960 a month. For renters on leases, it was $1,400. In San Francisco, <coughs> uh, oh, $960 a month? You wouldn't be able to make any payment with that money in San Francisco. That place is no. a nightmare. To those that live there, I do apologize. I hope, I hope to God, something gets fixed there soon. I was We've just talking so about this on... On, on that game I'm playing, there's mm -hmm. a chat, and there's a guy who's who's in California, and we were talking about how expensive California is. Yes. I mean, literally, that's why my parents left. My parents grew up in California, and in the Monterey, Santa Cruz area, mm -hmm. and it was expensive 
then over tw- like in 86 so <laughs> that's when they moved to South Carolina so like <laughs> it's crazy that the income of people is that much but they expect you to be able to afford housing that costs yeah, it... almost double what you make. Money floating around in the universe. Let's catch one of those comets and mine it. The rental housing crisis is a supply problem that needs supply solutions. The medium annual pay during the Great Depression was 22% of the cost of an average home. Today, it's 14%. That means that pay relative to home cost made it easier to buy a home during the Great Depression than right now. This is absurd. Well, I think the very, very that first thing we crazy. need to do is mm. make it illegal for anybody else or rather Rather illegal for anything other than a human being or a family of human beings <coughs> to own a home. All right. Yes. Corpor- Corporations do not need to own homes. They do not need to own homes. Period. End of story. Corporations? No. Any type of company whatsoever? No. Any business? No. Absolutely f- not. Why are they allowed to buy up a billion homes with cash over asking price to entice homeowners to do it? Because of course that benefits them. Why are they allowed to do that? How many homes in the United States are just empty? Literally empty right now. I bet if you looked into it, that answer might kind of freak you the hell out. Especially in relation to how many homes. The answer is, is there are actually enough empty homes to house every homeless person in the United States. Yes. For sure. Hold on. How many empty homes? Empty ha- homes in the U- in America. 16 million Holy homes shit. sit vacant across the United States because How many homeless people do we have in the United States? <laughs> Half a million. You can literally. There is literally times zero over. fucking excuse for anyone to be homeless when that's the case. Yes. At the very least, some of the empty places need to be like bought out by the government and offered to people who don't have a home. <clears throat> yes. That is insane. Yes, it is. Once again, corporations just doing everything they can to buy up houses. And once again, you know, you know why this was a thing, right? Because it's just it. Once again, the people in power make it that way just so that, you know, the American people are once again held under the thumb. That's how it always is. The governments and the corporations work together, which Control. is why we have... Yeah, which is why people call... people. I said corporatism in the last one, and I stick by it. Basically, what we have is corporatism. Basically, like, you have these big companies to choose from. It's like, you have Apple, you have uh, Amazon... You have Tesla, you have all these limited amount of companies that you get to choose from, like, who helps you through life. Versus you literally being able to help yourself throughout life by literally working and doing stuff yourself and, you know, supplying yourself. And it's just like, oh, how can we make Americans dependent on the government? Oh, I know. Let's basically, you know, force people into homelessness. That's it individuals we have across the country. Vanna White hires aggressive new lawyer after nearly 20 years on Wheel of Fortune without a pay raise. What? Okay, I know people used to like to make fun of her because they're like, all she does is push a button on the screen and look pretty. First of all, knock that shit right the hell off, okay? She's up there with Pat, too. She's doing a job, yeah, and she's she doing makes it better than show. I would. I wouldn't know what the hell yeah. to do. She <laughs> hasn't had a simple, pay raise? Don't be a dick. <clears throat> uh, just a quick cursory Google Pat's shows that currently she's raise. worth about 85 Maybe million dollars allegedly those numbers are super inaccurate but let's just go by that okay now real quick why don't we look at what pat sajak is worth uh, oh oh weird oh how the turntables mm-hmm. oh, how the wheels spin <laughs> sorry sorry uh he's worth 75 million again these google numbers don't mean a damn thing if you look me up i'm pretty sure that there are some websites that say i'm worth like a million dollars i'm worth like 14 dollars okay <laughs> but just Same. off of two there's google- some people out there that think i'm a millionaire i'm not i'm lucky i if I put everything that I have together in terms of, like, the wealth that I have, I'd say I probably have less than, like, $30,000, if I'm being honest. 
Google searches. That's pretty crazy. Well, crazy if accurate, you know what I mean. Anyway, let's move on. It's funny that businesses are begging for workers instead of just getting those robots we're told will so easily replace us if we raise the minimum wage. <laughs> We've been threatened with robots for so long now, <coughs> and it's so funny whenever they do try. I mean, look, self-checkout's been very successful, but you notice that there are plenty of regular lines open at the grocery store still? I mean, okay, sorry, let me rephrase that. Not open. There's usually 45 lanes that two employees are working, <laughs> and I feel bad for them because they have to deal with a line of 900 people. It's Ron, literally oh. ridiculous. Yes. Absolute and, like, legend. There's been stuff put out to like... Uh, about self checkouts, like it actually takes you more time to go through a self checkout than it does, like a line of people in the regular checkout. I'm like, not when incorrect. You have, have one fucking guy no. working a regular checkout, it doesn't. Well, yeah, and also here's the thing too, if I'm going through the self checkout with like three items, and there's like four people in line at the only cash register that's open, I'm going through self checkout. Yeah. Not to mention I've done it so much that I'm getting fucking good. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm quick with it. I got sushi and monsters today, and I was sitting there like, boop, 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 boop. Well, that was easy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm out of here. Yeah. And also, I agree with the statement. Ron Perlman is an absolute fucking legend. One thing before I get off this video. The mother f who said we're gonna keep this thing going until people start losing their houses and apartments. Listen to me, mother f There's a lot of ways to lose your house. Some of it's financial, some of it's karma, and some of it's just figuring out who the f said that, and we know who said that, and where he f lives. There's a lot of ways to lose your house. You wish that on people? You wish that families starve while you're making 27 f million dollars a year for creating nothing? Be careful, mother f Be really careful, because that's the kind of sh that stirs f up. Peace out. I'd like to thank Ron Perlman for being one of the coolest dudes I've ever seen in my life. Now, he was alluding to a certain man we're not going to name here on MK, making $27 million a year, but he does indeed apparently run, allegedly, none of this is proven, he does allegedly run a certain goofy or silly, whimsical company with theme parks or something like that that I'm, I'm a big fan of, unfortunately. Ooh. But yeah, I can't imagine being a CEO of a company like that and thinking that you're actually worth anywhere near what you're being paid. Because it's <coughs> pretty sh I'm a secret shopper that goes mm. in uh, and does it. You, uh, who is he about? I think it was Bob Iger. Oh. Sounds like he's talking about the Disney CEO. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Ron Perlman. Perlman. Bob Iger. Yep. It was Bob Iger. Mm. I knew it. It had to be that asshole. We legit were talking about him in the last video. Oh we yes. Reacted to how him. much? How much? We, I cannot stand Bob Iger. The man is so far up his own ass. It's. I, I'm surprised that he hasn't come out again and crawled right back up in there again. Like that's how far up his own ass he is. Rat out the employees. I get paid like to eat and always get a positive. Himself. Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> Hell to the yes, I'm sick of big companies trying to spy on employees. Some of the questions are just to find out who is slacking off. They want exact times and such. Even if I see someone not extremely excited to be at work, yeah, that's a question. I say they are. Screw them and thanks for the money and free food. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been secret shoppered at some of my jobs. We appreciate yeah. you. We are closed due to Alex walking out. We apologize for the inconvenience. <coughs> are you trying to shame him for knowing that he's worth more? I've been yelling yelled at by people. I've been yelled at by family for saying that I am worth more than minimum wage before because it was considered arrogant. I was very mistreated by people who were close to me in my life. For th eh, know your worth. I mean, honestly, I, I would say the biggest thing is just like, you know, know your worth and act like it. Act like you know your worth. So and we kind of joked about at uh, the music store. <coughs> it's like if we ever just came in for a shift and there was just nobody there and the store was still open the lights were still on but just nobody was working it was like yeah we'll know exactly what happened yeah exactly <laughs> and we're like just walking understandable <laughs> yep 
thinking and knowing, actually knowing, that I as a human being am worth more than eight <laughs> bucks an hour or 11 <laughs> bucks an hour or anything like that. You are too. You're worth more than that as well. You're always worth more than you ever think. Trust me. And don't ever let anybody close to you shame you or make you feel like an arrogant <laughs> asshole for knowing that you are worth an appropriate amount, okay? I just, I hate this place. This is a new one for me. Thank you for applying on Indeed. I'd love to set up a time to talk with you this week. Please find a time on my calendar here. Also, to let you know, I am going to reject your application from Indeed. Don't let that worry you, though. We only do this so our company does not get charged for your application. Cool. A sushi restaurant in Oregon has to pay $375,000 after they were caught stealing wages from 11 workers and threatening oh to fire gosh. anyone who kept their cash tips. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, it's just like Amazing Amy. You remember, I don't know if you remember her off of Kitchen Nightmares. Her husband kept all the tips from the waitresses. The fuck? Yeah, he was just like, it was like, like, wait, so you're taking all the tips? Like, yes, I'm keeping the tips. They get paid hourly. It's like, bro, that. They get giving... paid like $2 an hour. Yeah. And then, and then Gordon confronted him on it, and the guy was like trying to like strong arm Gordon. And Gordon was just, uh -huh. Gordon told one of the customers, he's just like, oh, by the way, the tip you just gave the waitress, he's keeping it. And the guy was like, that's awful. Why would you do that? And the guy's like, no, dude, you don't do that. And he's just like, he's just like, no, no, you listen here, motherfucker. You are literally stealing from these people. Like, that money is for the servers. Yeah. And it's, and. He didn't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> he well, may own the business or whatever, but. Yeah. Also, also, he was a fa he he was claiming to be Italian. He wasn't Italian. He was Armenian, mm -mm. and and people were just and like a even his wife Amy was fooled by it. It's like, oh, this is this is him. He's this is my Italian my Italian husband. He's he's the love of my life. It's like he's Armenian. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like it, I, I I heard his last name. I'm just like it doesn't really sound like an Italian. Le and I looked. I was like. Traditionally, Armenian. Mm. Okay, that explains it. But anyway. Nobody will go to jail for this, and the media doesn't give a shit. I like that. I like that a company, regardless of its size, can absolutely rob people blind. Absolutely rob them. And you can for sure trace that decision back to either one person or at least a small group of certain people. But they will never be punished for actual thievery. Isn't that great? I got fired. I dislocated my shoulder. Two doctors told me it'd take four weeks to heal. I told my boss my progress every week, and he kept wishing my healing well. Come the third week, I let him know I'm ready to come back next week, and he uh, let me know he'd already replaced me. I feel so much anger for the work industry. I give them so much. A committed schedule, good personality, good service, conscientiousness, promise, <coughs> attention to detail, good and careful driving, good communication, etc. I get injured and no loyalty. Freaking replaced me while pretending I still had the job, only to let me know when I'm ready to come back. Ducking bastards, man. People yeah. no longer believe working hard will lead Makes to a better life. Makes you want to stop giving them all that stuff, don't it? Yeah. People no longer believe working. Well, given the system that we're in right now, a lot of times it doesn't. It just dep also it depends on how you spend your money because there's a lot of people out there who there's some people out there who I know who work hard like they work their asses off but they are sh shitty with the way they spend their money work smarter not harder exactly and spend smarter don't just spend more survey shows what kindly look inward dear landlords the enemy is from within and not outside my landlord wants to increase my rent from august by 150 pounds due to also being affected by inflation as well as rate rise they can't afford to keep the rent at the same level so i sent him this no worries thank you for letting me know please do tell the landlord that if she's struggling for more money then perhaps she should get a real job and earn her own money instead of stealing mine Guards, Florence. Okay, yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> Suck it. They fired. Mm. Well, once again, rent, like, renters, like your, like your property, you're renting it out to people, and if the and if inflation causes the price of it to go up, I mean, you know, it's not like there's not much of a choice you can do about it. And I know, and I know that you know your rent being raised is a pain in the ass. Trust me, I've had it done to me multiple times. <clears throat> but <clears throat> honestly, I would want to like as a rent as a renter, I'd be like, 
like how much like, like I, it's like I know it's none of my business but how much is the property that I'm staying at like we cost you in property taxes per year because if they own the property outright the only thing that they are paying for is property taxes mm-hmm. and it's like and if they say it's like oh it's like it's like this much a month it's like okay let's divide that by 12 it's like okay so you're making a profit of over two thousand dollars a year off of me okay that's 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 a bit much but okay that's you know, so uh, honestly whenever I look at stuff like that I have I have, that's why I'm afraid to be a landlord because I hate telling people bad news like I have to raise the rent or you know you're, you've been late for two months in a row and I'm gonna have to kick you out or I, I would hate being that to guy. To be honest, I think if I was a landlord, I would do my best to grandfather people with their costs. So I would I'd like to like, do that. If too. I'm raising rent, I'm not raising rent for people who currently live, live there. If possible, <clears throat> I'm just going to raise how much I charge new tenants to move in. That's fair. And that, if they want to come fair. fight about it and talk to me, I'll just explain it to them and be like, look, I don't think it's fair for me to raise the rent for people who have been living here for years. Yeah, they're grandfathered into the price. Yeah, and like, I'm sorry that you can't get the apartment anymore for the same price they get it for, but this is what I have to have to do to keep this place, basically. And that shows loyalty to your already, like, customers you already have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for your tenants that are already there. Yeah. And especially if your tenant has never been late. Uh, that's just like me. I'm still mad mm-hmm. about what happened at the mansion because I was never late. I was always on time. I paid. I, 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 w- I kept... I kept them informed on like everything that was going on. They didn't care. They just didn't care. And that was just money wasted because weren't you like doing like rent to own? Yep. And they just flat out came out from under you and literally gave you like 30 days to get all your shit out of there. Yep. And And I remember I was so tired after trying to move my shit out that I almost passed out walking up the steps. Like I was like up the steps. Like I was like to that first landing. You remember that, Nick? Um, and I was, like, there, and I was just, like... So, whoa. Like, I literally, like, sat down on the landing, just, like... I just need... I just need to sleep. And then I remembered, like, I, I went and I laid down in my room, and just, like, it was the last night I ever spent there. <clears throat> that was a horrible situation, because... Mm-hmm. Not only did you have to pack up your whole life... But you haven't had any time since to unpack your life either. Yeah. So. Needless to say, my life has been still been very hectic. My husband and have since come crawling back. Ooh, yes. We like that. My husband was fired from his job in January of 2021 after 10 plus years because we got COVID and he was down for the count for a month. Two weeks ago, out of the blue, one of the higher ups sent him a text asking him to reach out because she hadn't talked to him in a year. Yesterday, I found his old job being advertised for $5 more than what he was making when he was fired. This is the third time since he was fired that I've seen it advertised. My my husband was a construction manager. He took the job at 19, so he wasn't aware of the real value his work and position had. When he was fired, he was making 17 an hour. It's been a year and a half, and they're realizing they can't get anyone else to do that job for less than 30. I told him to reach back out and tell them he'll come back, but not for less than $45 an hour. You damn straight. <laughs> yeah. Coming from Forbes, how did the writer sneak this one in? The forced return to the office is the definition of insanity. After five consecutive quarters of declining productivity, CEOs must abandon the sinking ship of forced in office work and embrace flexible work. Yeah, <coughs> they won't. South Park's creators have eliminated tipping at Denver's famed Casa Bonita. Servers now make $30 an hour, and some are mad. Yeah, the wrong people are mad. The people that we don't give a rat's ass about are mad. That's who. But I'm sure that the people that are making 30 bucks an hour starting as it's a server pink. at Casa Bonita, not even to say for the people that work in the kitchen or janitorial, that's pretty pretty goddamn great. Okay, I've been yeah. to Casa Bonita. I'm really, really glad that these two fine billionaires <laughs> bought the place. I didn't know they did that. Get the Bonita! Not quite a billionaire. <clears throat> Not 
And, wow, Matt Stone's actually worth more. Damn. And really shined it up. I can't wait to go back and support the business and all the people that work there. These two have been just fantastic heroes to me my whole life. I love these two psychopaths with all my heart. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it great, though, to see them actually doing something at least decent? At least decent? It's like the bare minimum that people with their level of money could do. They did it out of real, pure, unironic love for a place they grew up adoring and then went, okay, well, the people that work here deserve to be paid at least well, which in Denver, 30 bucks an hour may still not be enough. <laughs> Denver's pretty pricey now, dude. But you know what? It's a lot better than it was <coughs> before. Not sure what they were making before, but there was no way it was more than 15. All right? Regret bringing more slaves into the world. No lying. Did you regret having children? Yes. My son is 27, suffering from chronic depression in a low-paying dead-end job without the faintest idea of how to get out of it. His life is an unending continuum of unhappiness and dissatisfaction. If I knew that he would develop like this, I would not have had him. I would not want to bring a person into this world outside of his own volition. What? If I knew that he would experience no joy in his existence. I was under the impression that almost all living creatures had at least the capacity for joie de vivre. I can't read that. And I assumed that it would be so for my child as well. I'm sorry, son. I don't know what to do. Boss is upset Damn, that man. I have That's a dark. second job. Okay. This is a rant more so than anything. So I just got a second job at a large retail store that provides me with enough hours to finally make ends meet. After my first paycheck, I finally paid off a fine and and my car. But the boss at my first job, gas station, doesn't seem too happy. He was encouraging about getting another job and also provided a good reference. But suddenly last week he got upset. Uh, he said, will you still come in if we need a shift covered? And I said, no, probably not. I have a part-time contract of 10 hours and have been working there for over a year. I've never worked more than 15 hours a week. I'm a full-time student as well. <coughs> he seemed pissed that I suddenly was not at his beck and call and said, we expect expect you to be flexible. And I said I was for a year, but you didn't give me enough hours. I'm unreasonably annoyed by this. I, it just pushed my buttons, okay? They just hired a casual too. He's lucky I didn't quit on the spot. I know that you mm. need that job, but man. <laughs> yeah, I'll sing a lot know? of praises of my previous manager, but the one thing that did irk me was the fact that when I got a second job, he was like, well, you better be available to come in whenever we call you, Stan. Okay. It's like, I guarantee you, they're just like, like, he's just probably thinking in his head, he's just like, like I'll be available I need to let, I'm not at that second job. It's just like, it's like, like, th that'll show him, like, that'll show him, like, I, like, th I'm still his boss here, and he needs to respect me. It's like, um, yeah, but you're about to not be my boss anymore, if you keep talking like that. Yeah, you can't control somebody else's life. And plus, and plus, shifts being covered... Is not that's, the job. That's their job. That's they, the manager's they job. Should, they should fill in that shift. If I mean, that's the whole point of being a manager. Is you're supposed to. <coughs> part if of the no one else is available. Part yeah. of the problem there was though the comp the way the company treated the managers because, like, the managers did not get paid anything extra for any shifts mm. that they had to cover. Well, I understand. They were like salary, salary paid. Yeah, and like. It, yeah, technically, if there was nobody else to cover a shift, like, they would have to cover it, but they didn't get paid jack shit for doing it. So that's uh, kind of bullshit. Like, that is yeah, kind of that, bullshit. I mean, I understand being compensated and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and there is a flaw in that system as well. But Yes, very much so. Again, you know, they took that manager role, so they're a leader. Yeah. And... They shouldn't expect someone who's not part of that to to basically forfeit their life. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Hours a week, I feel like we could find that for you anywhere, man. Hell, even at Spirit Halloween when it opens, all right? <laughs> Screw that dude. You know, you were excited United about that States. opening up again. I don't know why yeah. I read it like that. It just, it just felt right. I don't know. $72.5 million class action settlement. When you control an employee's time, you must pay them. Home Depot, oh great, great company, has to pay $72 million for employees to stand around. That's correct, okay? Employees just standing around have to be paid. Yeah, uh, I'm not even gonna read this because I know what it's about, okay? 
I remember, again, with the UPS store, I know I've talked about it a couple of times, I remember that new owner that I mentioned before that got rid of a bunch of, uh, <coughs> a bunch of stuff. Well, he actually called me one day and told me to throw away the chairs and stools in my store. It wasn't a busy store. He just didn't like me sitting the f*** <coughs> down and wanted to make sure that I stood at the counter. There's really not much that I can do, okay? There's not That's, much that uh, everybody, why everybody can do appreciates Aldi's for allowing their cashiers to just have a fucking chair. Yeah. Why do they need to stand up all fucking day? Oh, it's because it promotes it, it, it promotes promptness and activeness and readiness. Unprofessional to be sitting down. It's like, so everybody that has a job at a desk is unprofessional. No, shut the fuck up. Eat it. And like literally all of the customers like have said like that I've ever talked to or everybody that shops at those stores, we don't care. We don't care if they're sitting down when they ring us up. It no. does not matter. No. It's this old mentality of just like, it's like military attentiveness. It's fucking Aldi's. Like, you go to your doctor's office, you check out with a lady that's sitting at a desk every goddamn time. Why does it have to be different at a grocery or retail store? Exactly. Like, it doesn't make sense. Zero sense. Can do. That's a big thing with the unions, actually. When I worked for IATSE, not as a full member, I was never a full member of IATSE, but I was, oh, what's the term? Regardless, I did work with them and for them a couple of times, and standing around, sometimes that's part of the job, and they know it, and they don't care. When you can't be doing something, you can't be doing something. And yeah, if you control an employee's time, which is what you are doing, you owe them money. Hey, guys, just a thought. Also like but it's kind about... of bullshit that people have to drive to jobs on their own time and don't get any kind of compensation for the gas or time that they take to go oh, back yeah, to their jobs. Yeah. I had to drive like it's definitely bullshit. I had to drive thirty to thirty five minutes every time I had to go to AT and T. I had to I drive that. all the way to Asheville and back every day and did not get compensated. Damn. Instead of canceled in when I first moved here. Jesus. ...celebrities for comments they made years ago, we start boycotting companies that want bachelor's degrees and three to five years of experience for $13 an hour entry-level jobs. You know what? We should start freaking out a little bit more about $13 being entry-level anywhere. $13 should be absolutely nowhere yeah, at all. Yeah, especially okay? with all if that shit. I mean, seriously, bachelor's a bachelor's degree, degree is four years... And then you have to have three to five years of experience and you're only getting paid $13 an hour. It's absolute bullshit. You should switch that three and one off the, uh, make that 31. Opposite. 31 yeah. would be a much more viable thing. I mean, not a bachelor's degree, that takes so much out of you. Yes. Not to mention, like, Grinding typically, for three to five years as typically well. a bachelor's degree Okay, one year is probably at minimum like sixteen to twenty thousand dollars that you have to pay out of pocket or acquire a student loan to pay for. Mm. So times that by four, and then you're only making thirteen dollars an hour when you when you don't put in all that work. Sorry. No, that's okay. It's ridiculous. It's I swag. agree. I kind of say college <clears throat> is a scam. That's what I say too. Trade school, this point. everybody. Yep. Trade school if you're young and thinking about Trade it. Trade skills. It, you, they will affect you much better later in life. Not enough for a human being to live on. And I'm not, I'm not counting part-time. I know part-time is different. I do understand that. But if you're working full-time and you can't afford a home, then no, that place does not deserve to be in f business. Just move to a place you can afford. Here, here's a map of the United States, but it's only states where someone making $15 an hour can afford a two-bedroom apartment, okay? And I know our good buddy Zach is from <laughs> Ark. Puerto Rico, Arkansas, three. and West Virginia. Stay. Three places. Take me home, West Virginia. You know why you can afford that in West Virginia? Because you're going to be driving an hour and a half to get fucking anywhere that resembles civilization. Yes. And guess what? There's a lot of um, substance abuse up there. Because yeah. there ain't shit to do but drugs. Yes. And it's, and it's very run down. And a lot of people are moving out of it. Yes. Ain't much. Ain't much up in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. 
Ken saw I drove through there and I was like, damn, I didn't realize there was this much nature just existing like nearby, yeah, I've, like without nothing in it. I've been to West Virginia and I toured a coal mine and we we uh, hiked some trails. I mean, it's beautiful <coughs> scenery and everything. But that ain't fuck all to do. And I played yeah. a metal show there and I was like, dude, this turnout is absurdly good for where this looks like it would be. And you know the reason probably? Because they didn't Because it was something to do besides drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were probably on drugs. They probably, they were. <laughs> but at least they had well, something else to do while they were they, home they, that As night. soon as the show was over, they were like, all right. They fucking love us. <laughs> they were, they were, I guarantee I got so many fist bumps. They were like, that's what the fuck's up, man. Like, and stuff. I guarantee you, after the show was over, they're like, all right. I'm going to go on my trailer and take some more Oxy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Please, for the love of God, tell me that's Arkansas and not that something is. completely yes. different. That's Arkansas. <laughs> and but then yeah, Puerto Rico. Look at that. Look at that right there. We've only got a few choices. Three. Okay. And I know, I know there are people out there that will look at this and go, two bedrooms? You don't need that, you selfish piece of shit. Okay. That's not the fucking point. I'm a human being. And you know, like me personally, I would need a second bedroom. Why? Because I need an office to do my work. Yeah. Oh, you can do that in your bedroom. Right now, I do. Okay, I do. I'm really, really sick and tired of people also trying to pull up the argument of you don't need that much room as if a one bedroom or a studio are any cheaper because <coughs> I'm going to blow your mind. A lot of the times them being cheaper doesn't really pull much weight. Paris no. is drowning in trash because the bin men have gone on permanent strike against the retirement increase. Their energy bills are 50% of ours. They retire six years earlier. Their pension is two times higher. Yet, they'll still strike. Why are they better off? Because they strike. Yes, individually we beg. United, we bargain. All right, I fully support every strike across the world from every union and guild that I possibly can. Okay? <laughs> I absolute... Well, yeah, the energy bills are 50% hours because they're, like, all of their bills come from nuclear energy. Like, they're 100% nuclear. And then, of course, their pension's two times higher because, well, let's be honest, the European Union has a better pension program because they don't have to pay for a military. Also, they have better health care. Because, again, they're able to... And they're able to national, the they times, were able to nationalize their health care because they don't have to pay for a military. A lot of the times it's free. Yes. And then, of course, they retired six years earlier, and the main reason for that is because, once again... Their, like, their social welfare programs are actually really good and are managed very well, whereas the ones that we have in this country are very poorly managed and have zero oversight. Jesus. Do right if I were a part of the Screen Actors Guild, which I've been trying to get into for years, I would absolutely be in Los Angeles with them right now on the streets, and that's the truth of the matter. Okay, mm. you know, a lot of people like to poke fun at Ron Perlman or somebody else who's down there with them who are millionaires, like, oh, they don't need to worry, they're millionaires. Okay, I get that, but they're there because of the 84% of members of that union that don't make enough money to qualify they're for help. Their care. support. The actors and people that are a part of it that right. really are the ones that would be seriously hurt. By well, also the main reason, like, there's two other main reasons why they're down there. Number one, <clears throat> likeness rights. A lot of these, a lot of these companies are afraid of extra work being done away with because of them using CGI extras and also using the likeness of these actors to basically basically make films without the actors in them and then the other one is the actors aren't act well the actors fighting for the little guy there's some truth behind that but i think they're more interested in getting a cut of the pie from streaming services because they aren't getting anything from streaming services not a damn thing and That's i think crazy well i know right i mean the amount of movies that like exclusively are released on Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon, and nobody receives any residuals from that except for the company who's like holds the streaming service. And I think that's bullshit. But again, I I think there are a lot of people out there striking for the actors, you know, like the 84% of actors who don't make enough, but 
I think the bigger thing is just like these actors who are ma- who like do have the power want to be able to you know make money off of the residuals from streaming platforms. By the way, apparently uh, as of either yesterday or the day before or a few days ago, re- recently visual effects artists have started to jump on board the strike as well. Mm-hmm. That's not surprising. Somebody made the meme, uh, <coughs> a meme about it that was like the JoJo thing where they're kicking the guy and uh, it was like the writers and the actors, the actors. kicking Hollywood yes. and it was like uh, over there sipping tea with the visual effects artist and was like joins in with the kick in the guy. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. By everything that's going on. So just remember, unions are not the baddie boy guys. They're not the bad men okay they just don't just don't fall for people telling you they're the bad guys i've worked with unions i've worked for unions blah 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 they're great okay i had never been paid more in my life up until working with iatsi on a few stage gigs okay it blew my mind that they were able to do that it was awesome i loved it and i don't have much more to say on the matter but i'm union strong even though i'm technically not actually a part of one i will do whatever i can to support them and you know what ups i hope you guys strike too because everybody deserves to be treated like a goddamn person everybody deserves to make enough money to own a home and have a family and eat and drink everybody deserves that okay and that's all there is to it the well, thing that sucks though is there's like com- there's uh people in positions with companies that really could stand to go on strike but those people will be fucked like there's no way they can afford to go on a strike yeah. Like the Amazon warehouse workers, like they need to go on strike, but there's no fucking way they could afford to or what they get paid. <clears throat> also, the thing about unions, I agree that unions are a necessity when it comes to most workplaces and most workforces, but I think unions have to be agreed upon by the majority of the workforce in which they're calling for a union. Say you say you have like a workforce that basically is like only 5% of the people in that workforce want to join a union. That doesn't mean the entire, like, place needs to unionize. I mean, like, there are people, there are people who are upset with some places, you know, not unionizing. But that, you know, for instance, Tesla. A lot of people are upset. Why isn't Tesla unionized? Because Elon Musk is breaking it up. No, Elon said that he'll happily accept, like, you know, unions coming in and everything like that. But the people who are working for him have to agree on like the formation of a union. And that's the thing. The vast majority, uh, it's actually like, they did a polling, more than 90% of the people at Tesla don't want to unionize. They're perfectly happy with the wages that they're getting. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly, and and I'm not saying unions are a bad thing, but but there are bad people in unions that do seek to, you know, just bully their way in on people, because I've seen it happen. That happened on the railroad system. The union bullied my dad into silence when my dad spoke out against the the merger of uh, Norfolk Southern and Canadian Pacific. That, or not Norfolk, but um, how it was. It was the one that he worked for, CSX. Uh, CSX and Canadian Pacific. And basically, the union bullied my dad into silence, basically saying, well, we'll take away your union membership and uh, basically we'll take away any protection that you have against uh, you know the company, basically wanting to like cut your wages and stuff like that. Yeah, the one thing people don't realize is corruption is a thing for the unions. Yes. You know, there's pros and cons to everything. Exactly. So, They're not I always mean, just a purely good thing. Yeah. Yeah. You need to I mean before you actually make the decision to go to a union, you need to look at both sides. Well and that's the thing. The union bosses basically for the, the railroad system that my dad used to work that my dad worked for, basically they it, they were standing to make a huge amount of money from the merger of both of like of like both railroad companies mm-hmm. and my dad was trying to get in the way of that because he didn't approve of like what it was going to be doing to his bridge crew his bridge crew was basically going to be cut in half and they were going to be like he was going to have to fire like half of his bridge crew and he's like I don't want to do that I love these guys these guys are awesome they do great work and it's just and they basically just said no you're going to accept this or basically, we're just gonna take away all your union be- union benefits. It's like, well, fuck you then. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, that was a uh, anti-work, and gotta be honest, 
some very, very honest anti-work in there, but also, you know, some stuff that, you know, could be seen teetering on the line, but mm -hmm. that comes with it. So, some some very interesting stuff in that, and uh, I guess that's going to do it. The time we've watched these, it's just made me all the more glad I don't work in retail for a corporation anymore. Same, same. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it, so until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. That's Bubu. Yeah, and we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.